What is up, Survive Nation? Firewave here today, gonna be your host. I don't know if Cryptic is hosting again, but Firewave and Cryptic always gonna be your host for this. Um, uh, a few topics to cover today um, and this week. Uh, number one is QD versus JKZ. QD, congratulations for winning uh, this past week. You guys won season six, the last season of SWL. And now we're gonna go on to the 1v1 tournament that is being hosted by SJ Cryptic. Um, Legend versus Flux. Those two are gonna play uh, Pirates versus Sword, uh, Pirate Sword versus Strong Fridge. Those two play Trip and uh, Hater are gonna play SD versus the winner of Rex versus Swiss, Aka versus Whack, TZ versus Ed, Communist versus Kills, Strostar versus AWMS, Hyper versus PVS, Colors versus Alp, Camwax versus Wizard, Okonomi versus Strawberry. Snowflake versus the winner of Legend and Draco. Sea Brookers uh, versus Frederick uh, is gonna fight Icy. Jay is going to fight the winner of Puffy versus Z Vanisher. Arctic is gonna play the winner of Su Suavey versus Sneaky. Zara and Ease, Whack and Sante. Shante, my fault. Uh, Xav is going to be playing the winner of SB vs B-Boy, and uh, Kirito and Banksy are going to play, and whoever wins that plays Volt. That's all we have for the 1v1 bracket so far. I would also like to congratulate everyone that auto-qualified and is going to be in the tournament that's worth the money, not the qualifiers. These qualifiees, basically the ones that are qualified, as I already said, are going to be Firewave, Jimmy, Room, Apricot, Cargo, Kron, Glitzy Mitzty, Isaac the Boss, uh, Psychedelic, Silver, Sleepy, Testy, Vodka, and finally Kuda. Yo, what's up everyone? I'm here to talk about the update that happened. Um, it looks like July 28th, so that was about three days ago, four days ago from five days ago actually from the time that this video will come out. I'm recording this Friday. Video should come out Sunday. Fire is having um, something this evening so he'll be recording tomorrow morning. So this will be out Sunday. So I'm going to go over what these bug fixes and updates kind of mean. What the I guess like secret business code behind it means and um, what this will change for the future of Civiv. So they moved the patch date from Mondays to Tuesday which means to me that most likely they were having issues finishing stuff on Fridays for the launch on Mondays. So instead, probably procrastination issues from the developers or just issues from the developers. So what they're doing instead is they're moving the date one day forward, which doesn't seem like that big of a deal. But when they have that weekend to chill over and that Monday, that means that the, all the procrastination has to be done on Monday instead of Friday, where it's kind of like the lull of the week. So it doesn't actually surprise me at all that they're doing that. All updates will be mm, occurring at 1 p.m. Pacific time, which probably means that they just had uh, more struggles with the time commitment. And then a daily rotation calendar will still be in effect for the second week. It just means that the rotation before, which you can see here, is just continuing, which means very few normal squads again. But they said, or it was supposed to be last Monday, that they were going to go back into more of a normal where they have solo squads and duos and then whatever the limited time mode is. But that looks like it won't be until at least next Monday. So we got some updates with Season 3. Refocus on quality of life. We've decided to push Season 4 start date to September 8th. This doesn't surprise me. Moving it back was heavily suggested by the community because it was so difficult in the beginning to accomplish all 30 levels within the time frame because of how little XP you could get in one day in the 24 hour cooldown. It basically meant like you had to play pretty much every, I think it was like 80% of the days in order to actually be able to get to level 30 without purchasing anything. Yeah, and they've also mentioned here, we'll drop, we'll wait for that down here, missions cooldowns have been reduced to one hour. This is what this means, and they're not going to actually say this because um, why would they? I know that the 24-hour cooldown had a drastic effect on the amount of of the amount of uh, play time that they had. Instead of people playing for a considerable amount of hours, they would just play for the missions and then leave. That's what I did. It's what a lot of the pros are doing. There's no incentive to play Survive because it's such a bad game right now that people are just playing for the 10 minutes that it took to get the missions and then they were out of there. So I, I would su be surprised if they're, if the amount of time that people spent per day playing or per session, which is like just sitting down and playing the computer, was significantly less than what it was before. And then players now also have the option to override the cooldown to keep switching missions at will by using GPN desktop and mobile browsers. 
or watching a video on ad on mobile apps. So basically, I think that was actually for some of the bug issues where missions were impossible during certain modes. Like, I'm gonna make up an example. I know this mission doesn't exist, but like, kill the Forest King three times. It's like, oh, that's not possible if there's no Forest King. So I think the reason why they did that was because there was a whole bunch of missions that were not possible. So even just flipping it twice wouldn't um, come up with a possible solution. And I don't think GP is necessarily a worthwhile thing. I wish they would add mobile or video ads to um, the desktop computer, but I understand that um, that actually takes coding effort instead of just downloading a sort of like some sort of plugin that just includes a, a mobile ad like a lot of the apps do. I'm sure you guys seen that before that includes a mobile ad. So mission requirements and XP awards are not dynamically generated when assigned to the user, which I think actually benefits the more competitive community because the, the amount of damage or the amount of whatever increases significantly for the better players. I would assume it's based some sort of on like a time and how difficult it is for you to or how long it takes for you to finish it. I'm not sure exactly how they are determining it, but that means that the XP gained per per uh, mission is probably higher for a top tier player compared to some of the lower tier players where they'll have less of a requirement but less XP from it. I don't know, I might be completely wrong. So they had fixed localizations issues where Danish and French would mix strings and Korean and Japanese had mixed strings, which seems to me like probably just poor development. Nobody really knew the languages, they just threw them all together and they got confused. It sounds to me that it's a user error, not really a coding error but I might be completely wrong. Delete account feature has been removed, which basically meant that the UI was so confusing that people kept accidentally deleting their account and then complaining about it, and then they'd have to try to do something about it. That's what I'm assuming. Battle tag is now displayed without the hashtag number identifier, which I think, in my opinion, was actually a glitch from the beginning, because if you saw, uh, they might have actually fixed it now. Back here, they'd have your name, for me, it's Twitch Eagle Cryptic, and then afterwards it had hashtag Twitch Eagle Cryptic, something like that. And I think that was supposed to be hidden. So they're just fixing that now. There was an issue where this box would be too big, so it would go somewhere into the solo. And if you managed to click it somehow, it would set the box down here, and then the whole screen would be messed up. But that looks like it's fixed, at least for now. And then they fixed an issue where the news button required two taps after the first time it was opened. Not sure what that was. Initially, I don't know too much about that. Text for the season timer and reward video were changed to be more clear. They had a bug where instead of new bumbles, bundles, it would just say expired until you clicked and it would start something else. And look, they are selling this is illegal. This is IP infringement. So they're charging like $12 for something that they don't even have the legal rights to own. Anyway, added ready text to the shop. Yeah, that's what I was mentioning there. It used to be expired before. Season UI center to the player's current level, which I think was, should have been something from the beginning because you'd always spawn down here, which is great, but that doesn't tell me what level I'm at and how close I am to the next level. So for them moving, I think was definitely a quality of life. Yeah, I think it was pretty brain dead for them to start it at, at one here. They fixed it after a bunch of 12 year olds complained about it because they had the foresight to actually see that that was an issue. The confirmation pop-up when buying a store bumble has, bundle has been removed. <laughs> So basically what they're going to do now is they're going to they're going to have an increase of issues with people accidentally buying a bundle when they don't want to and then people are going to complain about it saying I didn't want that bundle why do you give me that bundle kind of thing when they accidentally clicked it I'm not sure why really they removed that maybe it was having issues before so they just removed it just to to fix the issue but it seems to me like it's a dumb idea um store bundles can only be bought once now and a stamp will appear on the bundle indicating the player player already got it I'm assuming people were buying the same ones and then complaining to congregate about how they accidentally bought the same one and that was more issues that they had to fix. And then the last one is get Parma Crates button moved inside the store. I'm guessing the UI was actually so convoluted on the sh on the table that actually people complained about it because like there's so many buttons here. There's this one, there's this one, there's these five here, there's this one, there's all this stuff. It's such a busy UI. There's um, all this stuff down here, all this stuff down here. There's what realistically like I don't want to count it, but there's probably like 25 different buttons, probably even more. It's just so convoluted that at least I tried to move it to shop. That's about it. I'll speak to you guys tomorrow. Also, um, keep looking out for a video tomorrow coming out. Instead of the regular war, there's going to be a 300 sub celebration and kind of an update of the channel. So I appreciate if you guys uh, spend some time looking at that. Thank you guys all for being here. Um, it means the world. Uh, hit that like button, subscribe. I will catch you guys all next week. Adios, amigos. Y'all have a great one. Survive Nation.